Hey, what's up everyone? In today's video, we're gonna be working on this 2015 Chevrolet Silverado. So if you guys haven't seen the last video, we diagnosed this vehicle and found that it's the common leak on the AC condenser. So I will link that down in the description below or click up above here, you guys can check out that video and how we determined exactly how and why it was leaking. So there is a common issue and this is the new condenser and this one is actually reinforced over the factory original one. So the original one only has like three tack welds, like one here, one here, and then one at the top. And what happens is if you look at the, the way this is made, it actually is supported from the tabs, right? So this is holding it and if you think about that, there's only three tack welds holding this whole condenser on on the whole truck. So what happens is over time, you know, you hit some bumps on the road and the mounting point for your condenser is over here. So this whole thing is shaking under the weight of three tack welds. Eventually, you know, those loosen up and the stress is too much on those tacks and you develop a leak. Huge fault on these things. A lot of the vehicles are recalled or it was under warranty, but if you're out of warranty, then you're stuck doing something like this. This thing has 100,000 miles, so we're stuck doing it this way. So anyways, I have already removed the heat shield here or this kind of panel that goes on here. It has a series of clips and it's pretty straightforward to remove. I'll show you the guys that now. So I just lift up the center like you can see there and then you can pop the whole tab out. So you can do it with one of these pry tools or flat, same thing. So lift up the center, take the whole clip out. And once you remove that, then there's gonna be a panel here that you also remove very easily, which I'll show you here. So with the two sides removed, this thing should just pop up all the way across. And now we can fully access our condenser. All right, and then once those are removed, there's a couple ways. Some guys will uh, remove these bolts and they'll tip the whole rad back and then they'll pull it out this way. Uh, either way, these bolts have to come out. So we'll try, we'll, regardless, we'll take these out. The other method is taking out this top cross member. Uh, there really isn't that many bolts. I believe there's six. I think there's three on each side underneath. If you stick your hand underneath, you'll feel them. So there's a bolt here, there's three there, I believe they're 13 mils, um, and you'll see a bolt here, and then same thing, there's three on the underside of here. And with the exception of these two ties, this whole thing comes up, and then we can just lift this straight up. Other than that, if your vehicle has transmission lines running in, you'll see those here. So there's transmission lines, and then down below is where our two AC lines run in and out. So uh, probably going to remove this air box so I can get in there, but let's get to work. Let's get this thing done. All right, so we're gonna remove our air box. So we'll remove the sensor clip. So that's out of our way. And I'm gonna remove this section here so I can get down there and we'll remove our band clamp as well. Okay, the air box is held in by some rubber grommets on the bottom. So just apply pressure. can slide this baby out. All right, so with the air box out of the way, you can see these are the two AC lines coming in and out, and our bracket where it connects is right there. So now you can at least get to it to disconnect it, and also the fastener that connects to the rad. So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna remove the two bolts that are connecting the rad to this um, rad support. Because either way, whether we tip it back, if you wanna go with that method, or you remove this, these have to come out. So let's get a wrench on these, and we'll take these two out. There's one. There's two. And as for the debate on whether to just tip everything back, we can almost get it. You can probably see the line there, except it hits this upper air box. So let's go ahead and pop this off. It's only the one hose clamp and then these two on both sides and then this chamber comes off. So I'm gonna take this off for you guys just to see whether we can tip this back enough. If not, we'll take out the support. All right, so we got these off. If you're wondering how these guys come off, you just squeeze this portion and it opens up and you pop them off and then just a band clamp on the top. And then we can take this out of our way, set it off to the side here, and let's see the moment of truth. So let's see if we can tip it back enough. 
Uh, yeah, I'd say we can, you guys. It is dang close. But I think we can manage, honestly. I think she'll pop up. So let's go ahead and we'll disconnect our lines. And uh, I think we can get just enough to tip this back. If you can see there, should be okay. Okay, so the way these lines work, there's a little plastic shield. You slide it off and then there's a big C-clip in there that you just use a little pick to pop it out. But just watch out that you don't lose them. Uh, and you get your hand on them because otherwise they'll take off and if you want to be chasing them down in the body That's what will happen. So same thing on this side. We'll slide off the little plastic portion and Then it's ready to access the clip and Other than that we have the lines down there. So it does look like there's a 13 mil bolt holding that bracket To the rad which you could probably see right there. So we'll go ahead and take that one off as well so just before I take these off, because they're gonna probably puke a little bit of fluid, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen my bolts down there. And here's another shot at it, if you wanna try to access it that way. That's the bolt that's in question. And there's that block there, which, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, is this, where it holds to it. And this is your AC lines in and out. This bolt's actually a 10 mil head bolt once I put a socket on it. So I've got a little quarter inch ratchet drive here, so it's really not too much room to work with down there, but we're getting it. So we'll loosen and get this bolt out on this bracket. Okay, so we got that one bolt out. Okay, so next up, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you don't have anything in your AC system. In this case, it's all leaked out because uh, of this issue, but you're gonna take a 13 mil deep socket and it's hard to show you guys, but down there is the block that holds it all together. And there's a nut in between the two that holds the connection together. So right now I'm removing that nut. And then I should be able to get most of it from up top. So here's that 13 mil nut and go on to the next step. All right, and just so you guys have a better understanding, there's the block with the post and the nut that I just removed it off of that you can't really see from the top, but that's what it is and where it is. All right, so here's the clips that we removed. You just take your pick and you pop them out of there. And once you get that clip out, just make sure that you don't send it flying. You just pull the line and it pops out. So you do that on both sides. And once that's out, you should have everything free. Next up, you're gonna see these latches here. So see this latch right there. If you look at it, you're gonna see this tab portion here. You press on this to release it. So on both sides, and on here you can probably see it too. See this part that sticks out on the side of that tab? You press on that and that's what releases this, and then you pull up on your condenser and it'll come out of that slot. You do have to put some force on it and also hold your rad down at the same time, but then it pops up and out. All right, and so once you have your condenser free, I did see if we could roll the rad back and try to get it out. If it was just the condenser like this, you probably get away with it, but because those lines stick out into a big hook, it gets stuck on the bottom of this frame portion that holds your uh, battery tray in. So meaning this. So this big hook here is stopping it. So instead what I'm doing is I'm gonna take out the rad support and it's not that many bolts. There's a 10 mil here, three tens on each side on, from the bottom going up, three tens under here. You might have to take off the windshield washer bottle or neck, just loosen it to get in here or you can get from this side because there is one under here. So then there's a 13 mil here and this will pop off and then we can just lift the condenser straight out. So that's what we're working on now. There she is. Okay, so now with that rad support out, we should be able to just lift this out of here more or less. Yeah, that is much easier you guys to deal with. There she is. Okay, so we got the old one out and we're gonna have to transfer a couple things. We're gonna have to transfer this bracket over. So this should just slide out of here and then we'll pop it onto the new one. So we'll slide this guy out. 
transfer it to here, no big deal. Just hook it back in. And that pops on there. But the main thing is, I was gonna transfer these little shields over, but this is what I was saying. See how there's one tack weld, two, three? You got over here, solid all the way down, so it's gonna support it properly, so much better. And then here's the little stud that's gonna screw in to our block. So since this one is stuck on here, I'll give you a new little stud to screw into the block over there. That's pretty much it. Let's swap over our plastic and we'll throw this thing in. And there we go. One plastic shield is on. And there we go. She fits just like the original one that didn't work so good. This is much easier than trying to fight it around that core, I'll tell you that much. It's one thing taking it out, but you definitely don't want to be beating it up, putting it back, putting your new one in after you just spent all that time and money. So as you guys saw on the new one and the old one, there's four tabs, so you have to make sure that they slide into position. So that one's gonna have to go there. We're gonna go on this side and we're gonna do the same thing, make sure that it is falling into place. So I'm gonna have to lift it up, shimmy it over, depending on where we're at with everything. You might also have to play with your bracket that might be fighting you a little bit. And we'll go ahead and we'll get this sorted and drop it in. Okay, so we wiggled and jiggled and both upper and lower tabs are in and you'll know because you'll see this little latch lock on top. Same thing on the other side. You might have to play with a little bit of left to right. There's some people that kind of complain that maybe this tab doesn't hang all the way across. I don't seem to have too much of an issue with it. It seems to still fit fine. And both upper and lower tabs are in place. So we're in, we're good. Uh, I may, before I roll this thing back, install that one bolt that was a little bit harder to get on this little bracket here. And then we'll start getting into everything. Just before we put that uh, tower in, I think it's easier to get that in before we put our, our rad support in. Okay, so I tightened that little bolt down there. The other nice thing about this is they've already included those little clips. So just in case you lost them, it looks like this one does include the clip, meaning we just have to push this in and let it click in place, which is nice. And there's a little plastic guide down here. We can put it in as well. And then we can put our plastic back over top, which holds that clip from popping out. Let's do the other side. And we might have to manipulate it slightly, but either way, it's the same thing. This one actually is a hard line that goes to the front into the rad. So this one doesn't have as much flexibility as the other side. Okay, so there's that. Our bushing on the bottom screaming at us, but it's okay. Put that plastic clip in place, and now we're just about ready to put the rad support back in. Put this on, we'll make it a little bit easy for us. Okay. Okay, so the rad support is in, all our 10 mil bolts are tight, our 13 mil in the front is tight. And now, just before I tip the rad forward, I feel like there's a little bit more room to be had this way, so I'm gonna go ahead and install our 13 mil nut and those two lines to our condenser. Just before we go and attempt to connect our lines, I know it's hard to see down there, you guys, but remember our plastic caps. Or make sure you remove them, otherwise it's gonna be fun trying to do it and put them in. I think that's kind of obvious, but you just never know. You might be fighting with something that you don't need to fight with. So we'll get our two plastic caps out. Let's try to pop them out. There's the other little one. And we'll get our line situated and that nut on there. All right, so now that those lines are tight, we can go ahead and throw in our airbox assembly. Okay, so the two band clamps are tight, sensors on, we put on our two breather hoses on each side. So we click on. OK, 
here. And now we can put on this cover plate. So lift this in place. It clips in on the grill, and then it, the rest are just all the push pins. So you guys already know from taking them off. Put them in, pop them. It's probably the easiest part of the whole job. Alright guys, so the truck is fully back together and that is going to be a wrap for this install video on how to put this thing back in. So if you guys want to know how to charge it, I'm going to do a separate video on charging since charging the system is going to be a little bit more. We're going to have to add a little bit of oil to the system since we replaced the actual condenser and charge it back up. So if you guys are curious in that video, I'll also link it down in the description. And the parts that we use for this install and replacement will be in the description and box down below as well. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Hit that subscribe button for other repair videos and helpful tips. And we'll see you guys on the next video.